I'm starting the YouTube podcast and we will start. So we are live. So hello everybody. Uh, hello Thomas, thanks for joining us. We are very happy to have you. And, and today uh, we are going to talk about testing and the diamond uh, uh, testing in domain driven design. So we are uh, domain driven design Africa. We are a software engineer interested in domain driven design and archit software architecture and all the, the stuff uh, around uh, the software and what makes uh, deliver good software. Uh, it's co-founded uh, by me, Sheriff, and uh, Oliver from Ghana, and I am from Algeria. And today we have Thomas, and I will let him start his session. And I hope you will enjoy it, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Dede Africa. I'm very happy and truly honored to be with you tonight. Um, when Oliver contacted me uh, something like two weeks ago, I think, uh, he asked me, do, do you have something related to the code or to the tactical aspects of the domain driven design? I said the yes, but uh, I would love to, to talk about something, but it would be more about TDD than DDD. Uh, would you mind? Uh, he said yes, and the reason why I'm here tonight. Um, tests. Um, TDD in particular is one of my favorite topics ever. It's been a while since I started to TDD, more than 50 years ago now. Uh, I've made almost every mistake one can imagine with it. Uh, violating encapsulation and test private methods, private members, don't do that. Implement fragile tests because uh, we were targeting implementation details, don't do that. Uh, duplicate product code, uh, production code logic in tests, don't do that. Uh, making less baby steps than one should, uh, don't do that. And, and write too much complex tests and setup, uh, do, don't do that either, all right? Um, I've, I've talked about uh, TDD in, in conferences. I have coded publicly many times. I wrote some press articles and blog posts about it, but I think it's time for me now to talk about something that I've discovered um, like five or four years ago and, and gave me lots of efficiency and a lot of joy at work with the various dev teams I, I, I worked with. Um, outside in Diamond is a way of doing TDD. Uh, it's both a workflow and some important characteristics. We found the name with my associate Bruno Bucar. Uh, it allowed us to write anti-fragile and domain-driven tests. We will see that. Uh, before we dive into the topic, let me just maybe introduce myself. My name is Thomas Pierrin. I've been building software since more than 23 years now doing pretty much all the job one can find in IT, uh, and even more, dev, tech lead, project manager, software architect, uh, enterprise architect, uh, coach, uh, big brother, whatever you want. Uh, but I always continue to code aside, uh, even when I was involved in some kind of C-level stuff and organization architecture, enterprise architecture stuff, uh, and doing some open source, uh, for instance, and all in .NET and almost all related to testing. Uh, testing fluent assertion with Influent, Fudzers uh, with Diverse, Smoke Test with Smoke Me, and some other libraries related to tactical DD. Uh, I work in many domains like the gaming industry, the finance, uh, healthcare, uh, music, and now in the hospitality industry since uh, almost two years. Uh, I split my weeks by managing and coding with an API team uh, for uh, an international hotel group and do some DDD. Uh, or architecture consulting and training for other uh, clients the rest of my time. Last but not least, I'm also co-organizer of the DDD uh, meetup in, in France, DDDFR. Uh, you can check the video. Uh, there are some interesting top topic and stuff also. Uh, okay, this evening uh, we will talk about outside in TDD. We will show some code, but I, I finally won't do some live code. I'm sorry, uh, because I, I didn't manage to have enough time to prepare uh, something interesting for you. Uh, so I'd rather cancel that part. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'd rather do nothing than something crappy. So especially because uh, we have lots of things to say and to see before. Hopefully we we'll end up this session with a Q&A session altogether. So let's go. 
Uh, I want to start with a few disclaimers because it's important with that topic. Uh, first, there is no silver bullets, meaning that uh, your testing strategy and all other techniques must always be chosen accordingly to your context and both human and technical. Uh, second, as long as you understand your trade-off, there is no reason not to explore new passes. Uh, this, this is something that we explore to less time. And last but not least, we are sitting on the shoulders of giants. I, I just would like to, to, to thank uh, people like Ken Beck, uh, Martin Fowler, Michael Feathers, and also Nat Price and Steve Freeman for the great, uh, tremendous source of inspiration over, over the years. Saying that, uh, we are at the DDD Africa Meetup. Uh, so uh, maybe to, to, to have a look at what DDD loves uh, and to see what's in relation. DDD loves uh, contextualized service, first services, uh, contextualized with Bundet context. Uh, and I will take an example here. Um, here, I'm, I'm talking about hospitality industry. And let's say we have uh, an e-commerce platform to, to, to implement. Uh, we, will, we may have some kind of backend for front-end API, the BFF API here on the diagram. Uh, this one will uh, needs to connect with a CMS API, Content Management System, to have the, the contents provided by the business. We may have some kind of booking API to make some booking for the for the hotels. Uh, to do so, we rely on a, another context, and this other context is a central reservation system. Central reservation system will be upstream for us uh, to provide all the reservation, all the all the booking. Uh, to do to make it work, we need also a kind of distribution channel uh, for the distribution team to be able to set up in the central reservation system uh, all the resorts, all the hotels, all the, the, the information, they are accountable. Uh, we also have the revenue management. Revenue management team are people uh, um, finding which uh, prices to put, which rates and conciliation route to put for everyone. And the revenue management uh, will be upstream also for the central reservation system and the e-commerce. We may have the stay. The stay is uh, all the software which is running within some hotels to handle the property management uh, system, the PMS. Uh, everything that happened in the hotel will happen also in the, in the PMS, pretty much it. Uh, we have the marketing with the account API, loyalty APIs, uh, and we have also payment because uh, to make uh, central reservation and, and booking working, we need to connect to PSP platforms. So what I would like to uh, illustrate here, it's, um, it's our job uh, in, in my team to connect our APIs, to build APIs and to connect our APIs towards external system and external web APIs. REST APIs or, or things like that, okay? So, uh, and every API will be in a dedicated, uh, enfin, we, we, we part of uh, its own bonded context, like we just saw. TD, uh, DDD and the TD also love hexagonal architecture. Where, um, the port adapter, the hexagonal architecture uh, pattern from Alistair Coburn uh, is, is really uh, helpful for many reasons. Here uh, you can see uh, on the screen the, uh, an example of uh, hexagonal architecture. A client is making an HTTP request towards a web controller in yellow adapter, left side adapter here. The web controller uh, which is the adapter, will ask uh, something to our domain through an interface, a left side port here, the lollipop. The domain code will do a lot of stuff. And then some time to time, we need to ask stuff to external uh, APIs. So here we uh, ask some stuff to uh, right side port, right side lollipop here, implemented by uh, right side adapters, which is going some HTTP calls towards external APIs. Okay, so um, this is a classical. This is interesting and we like it because it's easy to test. Uh, we we uh, easy to test only the domain, for instance. Uh, we replace uh, the adapters by uh, test on the left and we stub the, the, the external APIs on the right. Uh, it's also allow us to protect domain code from infrastructure fads. Uh, it's help us to have some kind of quick feedback Carpaccio style slicing, uh, meaning that you can deliver something really fast, even without uh, any infrastructure, any data store, any database. You can just uh, show some code, enfin, show some application uh, to your external users to have feedback. It allows to have late architectural decisions we, because we can uh, 
uh, wait uh, until we understand where the domain before picking which kind of data store database we will need. So it's very interesting. And last but not least, it's highly composable. You can compose various hexagon uh, uh, and to build something like modular monoliths and things like that. So you can compose them within the same process or you can split them across the network among different what people are calling microservices. But it's uh, uh, okay. So in other words, uh, you can be domain first and, and start coding the domain first and then deploy as you wish. Here is a, as a web API, but it can be something else. Okay. Okay, let's talk about tests. Uh, before we uh, see the, the, the difference uh, of the outside in uh, diamond, let's check some different kind of tests. So first we have some kind of uh, what we call a fine grain unit test. Fine grain unit tests are kind of super fast. Here is a, is a, with that, that icon and they are really fine grain, they are really tiny, okay? Then we have some kind of acceptance test, which are coarse grain unit test, but coarse grain. And when I say coarse grain, they are still uh, super fast, but they are covering, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the API, the components, uh, the big picture, the, the, the components here. Okay, so the reason why we call them coarse grain acceptance test. Also, we have uh, integration tests. Uh, these are uh, less uh, speed and less fast because they are connected to real system like databases, network, things like that, external APIs. So uh, we use it for having contract tests towards external wounded context, external APIs, for instance. And then we have some kind of exploratory test, end-to-end -end test, manual or automated. And so uh, on the following um, upcoming diagram, you will see that uh, UT, AT, AT for acceptance test, integration test, IT, etc. Uh, so, okay. Uh, why do I do TDD? Uh, it's, it's, it's a good question. Uh, I, for me, uh, DDD, TDD made me uh, more relaxed. Uh, before I start uh, working, I was often uh, during five years before I discovered the uh, TDD. I worked five years before that, and uh, I was. Uh, suffering from the imposter syndrome. I was uh, suffering from procrastination. You know, when you do tomorrow what you can do today, when you when you 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 say, oh, okay, I'll do it tomorrow, and and and. Uh, but mainly, I was kind of often a victim of uh, para, um, analysis paralysis. When I was starting a new topic, I was kind of. Uh, with an anxiety of a super design. I thought I needed to, to do a, a, an excellent design before I jump into the implementation. And I, I took a lot of times before jumping, too late uh, coding stuff. And uh, I was kind of not, not really relaxed. And, and uh, so yes, baby steps, the baby steps of the TDD have really helped me to eradicate all my procrastinations uh, and, and all the premature optimization. I say premature optimization because uh, when you are doing TDD, it's red, green, refactor, the three steps. Uh, red, you make it fail. Uh, green, you make it work. And then uh, refactor, you make it better. Uh, and uh, the... Uh, I think this is Ken Beck that said that once. It said, um, uh, split the two uh, activities. The fact that make it work is one activity and the fact that make it better is another one. If you try to do both at the same time, you will have more trouble than if you split those two stages. So first make something that is working, even uh, uh, dirty or hard coded values and things like that. And then you will improve it so during the refactoring uh, steps, and, and, and it really it helped me a lot to be a more relaxed uh, developer. It also uh, helped me to be more efficient because uh, less regression. Uh, when you do TDD, you have a side effect, you have a, a test harness. Uh, it's, it's not the, the, object, the main objective, but you have th that uh, side effects. So less regression and uh, less debugging session with uh, live testing tools. Uh, like uh, Encrunch or, or stuff like that, you change your code and you have a, a highlight on green or red in the, in the margin of your IDE saying it's working, you're blocking something. And so there are still some debugging session to do, but very less compared to when I, I started to, to program. 
to code. And last but not least, it's more relevant uh, for me. You, I became more relevant because it forced us to clarify and to share our mental models. Either you are uh, uh, mobbing or you are uh, pairing with someone else. Even when you are alone, the fact that you need to uh, express uh, what you want to do in the test force you to uh, clarify. B before that, I was starting to code and, and, and doing some live. Uh, uh, I, I may be lost. Uh, so it really helped me to, to frame myself and, and my understanding of the current uh, problem. OK. Uh, and Yagni, you ain't gonna need it. Uh, it's through the outside in form of TDD. We'll see that in a couple of seconds. But this kind of TDD outside in form uh, really helped me to focus on what really matters because you are not supposed to code anything in your implementation which is not directly related to a need, to a requirement, to a test with outside in TDD. So, it um, prevent me from being lost or for playing with design uh, all for nothing because uh, doesn't is not related directly to the to the objective. Uh, I, I talk about outside in, so uh, let's uh, see the, some common workflows of TDD. Outside in, uh, outside in TDD is usually you start with an acceptance test uh, and you uh, imagine you have a black box, your new API, your new system. So you talk to it, and you and you, you are designing it uh, through that first acceptance test. So you are focusing on the interactions, the communications among uh, external users, uh, and and your new system. Your system is like uh, empty; it's an empty black box, but uh, you talk to it. Uh, then you add uh, another acceptance test, and and to make it green, also you will have to do more implementation within the empty box. The empty box is not empty anymore. So you will increase the implementation step by step, test by test, uh, like this, this one and this one. And, and, and from test to test, you will improve and you will increase the implementation within the box. So all the design is driven from the outside of the box uh, through the interaction you want to have with that API, that component, and things like this. OK, this is mainly the outside in uh, uh, workflow. Uh, inside out, classical uh, classicity TDD, you start from the center. You start with uh, one class, one concept, one domain concept. Uh, so unit test, uh, fine grained unit test is, uh, mainly. And you add a new one, and then you add a new one, and you, and you will increase your design, you will increase your system from the center towards the external. Um, towards the outside, and test after test, you will uh, increase your 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 uh, your system, your API, and 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 that's it. So you will end up with the final uh, things from the center to to the. So uh, outside in, we drive everything from the outside. So the black box is empty, and we fill it uh, step by step. And inside out, it's like we, we start from the core domain problem issue, and we and we uh, layer by layers, uh, non, uh, layer of domain of, of class of types of whatever you you uh, you make it grow from the inside. Okay, uh, that's it for the basics. Uh, now I would like to share with you some common pitfalls and, and some mitigations uh, I found uh, for every one of them. So okay, test driven development. It's important to, to, to beware of some stuff. First, beware of fragile tests. Uh, it's when we uh, our tests are targeting some implementation details instead of behaviors. When your tests are not behavior driven, then they are uh, implementation driven, uh, they are fragile. Uh, and we will see that after in a, in a, in a diagram, you will understand much better. Uh, second uh, pit, pitfall for tonight, uh, blind spots. Blind spots, it's when uh, the combination of all your unit tests and all your integration tests that supposed to cover everything when you will uh, do the, uh, the uh, assembly, uh, when your test coverage is not enough and, and you have some uh, bugs or silly bugs uh, around that. Uh, and this is because we used to over, overlook some boring but crucial areas like uh, adapters code, like the infrastructure one. Uh, third and last uh, issue for tonight, the complex setup. Uh, complex setup is when you have a really complex code for the test, 
for the setup of your test, and it really uh, reduces our stamina and uh, engagement. It's really uh, it's really painful. Um, so let's start with the first issue. The first issue is fragile test. What, what do I mean by that? It's when we have situation like this, we have uh, some acceptance test, we have some unit test. So uh, coarse grain acceptance test covering uh, use cases and things like that, and fine grain unit test covering some sub parts of our system, okay? Uh, let's say, you say, now we want to change our implementation here in the uh, white uh, location, okay? What does happen? We want to replace those squares by, let's say, triangles and, and, uh, and, and circles. Uh, here, uh, it will impact everything that is related to those, um, those uh, forms, but also, so that were in relationship, so uh, the uh, light uh, gray here, we're uh, composing, we're aggregating the, 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 the stuff, we, the type we want to change. So they will be impacted too. So at the end of the day, uh, we call uh, fragile test situations where when you change something, when you refactor the um, inside of your application, all of a sudden you have uh, tens of more uh, of unit tests that are broken. Uh, and it's really, uh, really, really painful. Because at the end of the day, what people are doing, instead of thinking about it and try to implement better tests, they stop doing refactoring or they stop doing tests or they uh, unplug tests. Uh, there are many situations where I, I could see that. So uh, it's, it's really an important um, uh, issue to, 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 to handle. Let's see some mitigations uh, we have for you. Uh, first is do not test implementations. Okay, uh, in that price and Steve Freeman wrote in their tremendous goose book, uh, something like uh, unit test behavior and not methods. So uh, yes, unit test behaviors and not methods. Uh, this also has been repeatedly said by Ian Cooper uh, again and again with his great talk, something like uh, named a TDD where did it go wrong? I think it's, it's, it's that really interesting talk. Uh, and, and so, yes, nothing new here, but uh, I had to repeat it again and again myself to, to not test implementations. Uh, focus on external behaviors instead. Uh, when, when it's hard for you to even uh, uh, implement behavioral uh, unit test, fine grain unit test, let's focus on external behaviors and, uh, and with acceptance tests. Uh, and hence uh, favor coarse grain unit uh, acceptance test over fine grain uh, unit test. Um, okay. Uh, second problem was uh, beware of blind spots. Uh, as a disclaimer, I, I, I should say that I must say that test coverage will be just a visual help here to identify blind spots in our code. Uh, it doesn't mean that test coverage is a must. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not my point. Uh, so here it's. Uh, hexagonal architecture, classic one. Uh, we used to do a lot of acceptance in, in, in sort of uh, uh, tests and unit tests uh, on, on the domain side. And we uh, also are supposed to test the infrastructure code, meaning all the adapters, the, the place where you enter uh, into the domain and when you uh, go from the domain to the infrastructure. So either when some, someone is asking you uh, questions top uh, left or, is, or if when, you, when your domain needs to ask something to an external API, uh, it goes through the right side port uh, and, and adapter here. So for this kind of adapters, we are implementing some kind of integration tests. Okay, so you can see it's, it's okay. I'm covering almost everything and, and it's fine. Uh, that's true that uh, as developer, we really like uh, um, domain-driven test or acceptance test or uh, behavioral test. So what we do is we implement acceptance test towards our domain directly, and we stub uh, whatever we need to stub uh, for the external uh, calls. So no infrastructure code is involved in this kind of this typical situation for people uh, doing and talking about hexagonal architecture that are doing such things. Uh, of course, this is not enough, and uh, everyone is saying, okay, I'm building some integration test, contract test. Here you can see uh, contract test is integration test uh, targeting both the real, uh, the real implementation of your right side adapter here, 
which is the one doing some HTTP calls towards the external systems. But also we, uh, we have some kind of um, uh, a, a stub and, and contract test typically will uh, call the two implementation, the real one and the stub one in order for, um, uh, for it to compare and to see if your stub is faithful to the real behaviors of the uh, real uh, right side adapter. So it's, it's cool because uh, if they behave the same for a, a set of um, uh, scenario, one could say that your stub, which is the same that you will use in the acceptance test, will be uh, faithful and trustful uh, for your acceptance test, uh, <coughs> running much faster uh, to be, be uh, faithful to the reality. And in fact, it's because uh, as dev, we really love the uh, right domain driven test and, and thing really uh, the handling just the pure, the pure domain. And what happened is um, we usually have 100 uh, covering uh, on that part and we are less uh, careful on the, on the integration test. Uh, and here we can have some kind of bugs like here on the part which is not covered by the integration test, by the contract test. Uh, and this happened. For me, it's happened very, very often because as dev, we don't write enough integration tests. They are slow to run, uh, boring to write, uh, and, and this explains why uh, we do not really cover uh, well every scenario and we may have lots of bugs in this boring code because um, most of the right side adapters are kind of boring because it's just adaptation from one model to another. And, and doing some technical calls. Uh, yes, so I, I, I have some ideas, but I just observed that uh, most of the team I worked with were kind of uh, reluctant to, to write more uh, integration tests. So it explained a lot of uh, blind spots and a lot of bugs. So mitigation for us is finally, uh, to detect bugs in, in, in adapters and, and to do so via our beloved acceptance test. We love acceptance tests. So let's include the adapters into them. Uh, and then we will have all the combination of the combination uh, covered uh, by our uh, business test uh, with it. Uh, it includes all the adapter codes, but we will uh, only stop the IO. We'll only stop the uh, network calls, we we'll only stop that. The rest, the adaptation uh, uh, part of the adapter code will be covered within our acceptance test. Uh, and beware of complex setup. The, the last and, and, uh, problem is um, here it's an example of uh, one uh, legacy uh, test suite uh, for the room availability. Here we can have uh, the, this is the entire file for the test suite. So a big, uh, big, uh, big guy. Uh, and we have something like uh, 740 uh, lines of initialization, initialization of fields like this, availability service mock, account service mock, observable service mock, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, after we have lots of initialization code with preparing some DTO when I've, and, and stub, like when I'm called with that, uh, I will return this. Uh, so it's, 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 it's really, uh, yeah, it's, it's really crappy. Uh, and it, so 700 lines of test initialization. Uh, and then after we have some tests, and again, the tests are really uh, too long, uh, too much technical, uh, and they are using here and there lots of fields, uh, private members initialized, initialized uh, upstairs. So when you read the test, you every time you need to ask yourself, uh, okay, what is the state of the uh, underscore availability resolver here? Uh, where does it be a setup before, et cetera, et cetera. So this is uh, the worst example of what you can find in terms of uh, 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 painful mental model uh, for a daily uh, for a daily job. Uh, and you, of course, since you have private members in the test suite, you may also have some kind of side effects, nightmares, uh, but uh, okay. To mitigate some kind of complicated situation like this, uh, it's to avoid cognitive overload as much as possible. So uh, rely on the power of sameness principle. Power of sameness, it's uh, almost all your tests should have pretty much the same uh, 
maybe names, uh, structure, and things like that. If you do so, you will be it will be easier for you to handle your code base of, of tests. It's also to favor local variables over test suite members. Uh, everything should be created from the test uh, and, and easier isolated, uh, not uh, defined elsewhere. Um, and it's to use also domain-driven builders, builders that embrace the language of your domain to shorten and to explicit the arrange section of our, uh, of our test, okay? And also uh, to treat your test code as production code. Uh, so it's to, to, to do some merciless refactoring also on your test code uh, again and again to, uh, to have a, a clean situations, uh, manageable situations. Okay, so with the three, uh, let's sum up all those pitfalls and risks while doing TDD uh, and, and the mitigation. Uh, for the fragile test, basically these are consequences of badly written tests, tests that are targeting too much internal implementation. So do not test implementation details and favor acceptance tests. Uh, and since it's easier to say that uh, than to do it, uh, to have a behavior uh, uh, test at the fine grain level, at the unit level, uh, it's my trade-off was uh, to recommend to write more coarse grain acceptance tests uh, than the fine grain ones. Uh, of course, there are exceptions, huh? but uh, it will take more time to explain and to discuss about it, and it's not for today, unless we have specific questions at the end, of course. Um, second uh, blind spot, second issue, uh, blind spot in our global test harness, uh, meaning the combination of fine grain unit test and acceptance test uh, with integration also, etc. Et uh, as I could see in all various missions and contexts and companies and teams I worked with, uh, this is a consequence of a psychological bias. We as dev rather write domain related tests, unit tests and integration tests. Uh, so, uh, hence the trade-off. Uh, let's include uh, all these blind spots into our domain-driven acceptance test. Let's test them in all our relevant actions in motion uh, for the business use cases and stub only the I.O. to keep our acceptance tests really, really fast and to cover uh, a lot more of uh, cases. Um, the coverage combination will be higher and the team will feel more confident with that setup. Uh, Alors, it's a little bit too bad for the cargo cool coaches that still continue to think they can easily change the people and the culture of the people instead of adapting their, pra their practices. I've met tons of them in my career uh, and too bad. So, uh, what, you, you know, it seems like one should do, not do this, one must not do that. Uh, and, and when you're asking why to them, awkward silences uh, and before dog dogmatic answers uh, most of the time. So in my opinion, uh, our practices must remain alive, adaptable to various contexts uh, and uh, anyway. Uh, and the third uh, issue, complex code, code, complex test setup uh, that reduce our stamina and disengage people day after day. The trade-off is to simply uh, simplify our test codes and to test setups uh, and to, to include all the setup parts in every acceptance test to prevent from declaring stuff elsewhere, far away in private members or fields uh, in our test suites. But uh, to do so, we need to shorten the iron section. We need um, to the setup section, you know, at the beginning of your test. Uh, so to use builders to make it really short and crisp and, and domain driven. Uh, they will talk with the language of the domain and, and talk about concern of the domain only, not technical concern, not stub, configuration details and things like that. Uh, but it's probably um, time for me to, uh, to to tell you more about these trade-offs uh, and, and with the outside-in uh, Diamond TD. Uh, I don't know why there is some kind of uh, uh, writing on the screen. Can you can you see it also? Or some, someone must have uh, write something on the on the on the on the screen. Am I the only one seeing it, or? Uh, um, Sheriff? Sorry about that. I can see that, but trying to find out who is doing that to disable the person. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know well, uh, if you can uh, erase it or. Okay, it's Karen. Maybe. Oh, to... let, let me. Uh, or if you want, let me stop share and, and share it again. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Let's do it like this. If it's. 
easier for, for us to, to do that. And please, to the audience, stop writing. <laughs> yeah. OK, so uh, outside in Diamond oh. TDD. Uh, yes, uh, let me check. Uh, it's a consequence of many observations of people working with us here and there in many teams, many organizations, many companies, and many customers over and over and over again. Um, first part, the outside in, is related to the overall workflow we favor. The second part, Diamond, is related to the kind of test we suggest to do more. The components, the acceptance test, that are coarse grain unit tests. Uh, this is a direct reference to the test pyramid that I really don't like. Uh, I don't think it, it was useful, uh, at least in the various contexts I work with. Uh, because every time I, I um, like with the word unit test, uh, if you want to, to start a, uh, an argument on, on Twitter, you, you talk about unit test, and everyone will have a different meaning of what it is. And you have lots of people that do agree, uh, but, but arguing that they are not, that, because they think they are not agree uh, about that. So unit test is kind of uh, too fuzzy, uh, and so do the um, pyramid test pyramid. For me, it was more error prone and confusing for people, and even with more experienced one. Uh, so uh, even if the idea of the testing pyramid is to be the starting point of discussions uh, about our test strategy, this pyramid, pyramid should definitely be uh, delivered with an experienced tech lead or, or coach uh, side. Uh, anyway. Uh, with Bruno, we thought that the diamond fits better to express the fact that we trade off to write more coarse grain acceptance tests than fine grain unit tests. Acceptance tests are also unit tests for most of the people, but uh, they are kind of different scope and, and granularity. And this is where comes the diamond thing. Um, and actually, outside in diamond TDD is a style of doing TDD, a specific workflow, mainly outside in, a kind of double loop between the coarse grain loop and the fine grain loop. And, and some specificities about how to write tests, we'll say just in, uh, that in a couple of seconds. Uh, yes, I, I talk about a double loop, uh, but before we have a look at the code, uh, let's focus one sec on the workflow, the way and the pace we use to write uh, our tests. Um, here I wrote double loop with a question mark because my version is slightly different than the classical double loop. Uh, here is a classical version of, uh, of the double loop. First, you write a failing acceptance test towards your black box, your system, your component, your future API, whatever. So you write a failing acceptance test. Secondly, you try to make it pass by, by starting the implementation of the inside of the black box. And to do so, you will start writing a, a fine grain unit test. Uh, and then you will start the inner loop uh, which is red green refactor, red green refactor here. So you will wrote uh, and make grow your system through uh, unit tests, uh, fine grain unit tests, um, until you make the original acceptance test pass. In other words, until you make the uh, original acceptance test green. Uh, then you can refactor whatever you want or need to refactor. For instance, the, you improve your acceptance test code, something like that also. And you write another acceptance test in the outer loop before you continue within the inner loop uh, by writing the fine grain unit test you need to continue to grow uh, your system from the from the uh, inside. OK? Uh, so I said uh, not really double loop. It's a one and a half loop. Why do I, I say that? Uh, we still have debates about it with my associate, Bob Carl, which is a hell of a tech coach. but. <laughs> my, my version is pretty much not a double loop anymore. It's rather something like a one and a half loop. It means that I do not always write fine grain unit test. It will depend on the context and the situation. In other words, every time I face a difficulty or every time I, 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 as a pair or as a mob, we think it works to jump into that inner loop, we do it, uh, but not always. Uh, but there is a huge disclaimer with this, okay? I can do this because I'm practicing TDD at work since more than 50 years. So uh, I know how to, to make it when I'm in difficulties. And, and I, also we can do this be, uh, with my mates because we have lots of discussions with the domain experts or the domain proxy. And, and even if our understanding and our code uh, will continue to evolve day after day, 
because we rename things on the fly whenever we can. Uh, we already have some kind of shared mental model of what to do, and we discuss also a lot of uh, how to do it. Uh, and, and with strong style pairing, uh, you know, it's the one uh, where uh, the one having the ID is not the one having the keyboard. So it forces you to, to talk, to explain uh, what you want to, to, to try, to test, uh, and to, 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 to design, etc. Um, but when I'm coaching or teaching TDD to beginners, uh, we really do uh, the double loop. Uh, and, and, and write more uh, fine grained unit tests. Uh, it's helpful also for the design, it's helpful for, for, for all, of the, all of the stuff. But that's it for the workflow. Let's see our acceptance test, uh, how our acceptance test looks like. Okay. Um, it's all right if you can't see the code right now because I will help you to navigate with me line after line. Okay. Uh, it all starts with the test suite. Here, a test fixture because we will uh, have a code in C sharp with n units. It's a test fixture. And our test is availability controller should. An important step is to know what we want our system to do. So to find a test name. So I'm, here I'm following the should convention. I think first time I've seen that uh, was from Sandro Mocuso uh, from London. Um, so uh, read it like a sentence starting at the test suite name, availability controller should. And, and, and reading the, the, the following. So uh, availability controller should return room availability giving a city name and a list of requested room types, okay? Uh, a room type is something like standard room, double room, family suites, and things like that. Uh, then we use further uh, of random value or random value generators. Here, the diverse library uh, in .NET and further help us to uh, randomly detect hard coded values or unsupported cases. Uh, but they also help us to shorten our test setup, the arrange part of the test here. Uh, for instance, here in one line uh, only, I can create uh, a specification for an hotel, the Bellagio Hotel here, uh, and specify the room type uh, dynamically uh, and uh, the uh, generate room type uh, method allow us to pick randomly three different root types from my domain, from all my domain possible values. Uh, so every time I run the test, I may change the, uh, the, the, the cases and, and detect new bugs. Uh, of course, there is a way to make it deterministic. Huh? When you are using further like that, you are aware of when it fails, you have a code, uh, and then you instantiate your further with the code and it's deterministic. So you can reproduce again and again what's failed on your software factory or, or on your um, then we rely on builders, uh, see the builder pattern uh, in order to declare and what we need to set up this test. So uh, this builder must be domain driven. In other words, they are, they are using the ubiquitous language of our domain experts in order to express domain intention only and not technical. Uh, how does it look like? Here, here we want uh, to work with two affiliated hotels. Uh, I'm working for an international group uh, having tons of hotels from various brands and various policies. So we, we, we need some hotels that are affiliated to, um, to our group. Uh, the two hotels are described via the hotel specifications. We just create before with the further. So remember the Bellagio hotel variable and the hotel, uh, hotel in town with all possible room types uh, here. Just created those two uh, specifications for the builder to be able to, to create what needs to be created uh, for these hotels. Then I explain to my builder what that I would like to have uh, only fully booked hotel. So having some fully booked hotels and giving the name, uh, the uh, not the name, but the, uh, the specification for it. So here I want the other hotel in town with all possible room types to be fully booked. Uh, and then we ask our builder to set up all the stubs, test doubles, uh, for this test. Um, and uh, we want a situation when uh, one should have one availability uh, per supported room type for every hotel. So generating one availability per supported room type, it will be uh, the uh, behavior that I would like this builder to configure for me. Uh, one room available for uh, every room types. Uh, of course, if they are not already fully booked, huh? if the hotel is fully booked, I don't want to have some kind of availability uh, for it. Uh, and finally, 
we build our availability service, uh, the one that is doing the domain logic, meaning that the availability service uh, that exposes and implements the left side port uh, of our hexagonal architecture, for instance, uh, this portion of domain logic that we will inject to our web controller, uh, the web controller being our left side adapter. This is really, really important um, for both our future refactorings, but also for the sake of readability. We should never, ever, never put some technical details in our builder domain specific language. Only domain driven intention and expected behaviors uh, publicly uh, for our, our builders. Uh, one should not talking about stubs and stubbing details here in the test uh, on the public side of the builder, but of course, the build method internally will instantiate our various stubs whenever needed. Uh, and internally using some substitute libraries like msubstitutes or Mokito in Java or whatever your platform, uh, uh, your favorite platform, uh, you will find uh, and name it. Uh, then we can instantiate our subject under test, which is uh, SUT. Uh, and here is the av availability controller, the web controller variable. And because targeting the web controller, uh, we, we target the web controller level uh, in our test, so it helps us to cover all the adapting code from it. And remember, we won't, we, we don't test the network here, uh, only the adaptation uh, code. So from the JSON or DTOs to the domain, and vice versa, when our API return uh, an answer. Uh, and here we inject the result of our builder to this web controller. So we inject our hexagon, we inject our domain to the left side adapter to the web controller. Um, we define uh, the act, uh, the, we define the end user request, something like as a customer, I want to know what availability will you have for me uh, and a bunch of, uh, and for, for a bunch of room types. Um, you remember the single room, the double room, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and important here, no network, no IO. Even if you want to test the full black box, uh, black box, the uh, the um, the full uh, API, we want to test our component, uh, but we want our acceptance test to be as fast as possible, between five and two millis 200 millisecond max, we we'll say for for every acceptance test. So uh, no IO. Uh, and last but not least, the assertion. So instead of exposing all the DTOs. Uh, and exposing all the check on our technical types uh, for, this, for, the, for this request and for the answer, we hide them behind a one-liner domain-driven intention. Something like a private method, uh, private uh, method on the test suite or an extension method, whatever you, you like. Uh, here is the check that room are matching the requested criteria methods. Uh, that you can see. So uh, this one line invocation helps us to hide the checking implementation. So the assertions, uh, so we can hide the fact that we are checking the kind of HTTP response we are supposed to get here, HTTP 200 uh, status code. It also helps us to hide all the check and the assertions we make on the DTO, uh, which is returned by our web controller uh, as, as the answer. So, uh, Having this private helper uh, encapsulating all the infrastructure details also uh, has also a very interesting side effect. Um, it allows us to reuse uh, the very same assertion intention, the very same intention, the expression expressed in the domain language, so that we can implement it differently if we have different, uh, different sorry, uh, left side uh, adapters, if we have this requirement. I mean, uh, the requirement of having to switch the exposition model and to switch the technology for our service, either through web API or message oriented bus, bus etc. Et so, uh, but on my side, uh, we usually expose our service through web APIs. So we don't have that requirement, but once again, encapsulate change from the OOP world is a good advice. So we encapsulate the strategy of checking behind that uh, um, domain-driven uh, method. Okay, to sum up, first we have the arrange part of the test, should not take more than eight, 10 lines. Uh, then we have the act, uh, 10 lines here of code, 
Uh, one can even hide the DTO declaration behind a single uh, private method also. Uh, so action is between one or two lines. And uh, finally, we have the assert a section of our acceptance test and here uh, one line. Uh, and here again, you can have you can eat your cake and have it too because uh, meaning you can have a domain driven assertion without any specific details about our uh, DTOs and infrastructure adaptations. But nonetheless, testing them in order to avoid bugs in production related to any kind of adapters. And, and to do so, all you have to do is to hide your assertion behind a private method, uh, exposing your uh, intention, your checking, your asserting uh, intention. Um, here, uh, I must admit that I could have found a better example for a domain-driven name. Sorry for that, not really relevant. Uh, um, uh, check that rooms are matching the requested criteria, it's uh, blurry, but I hope you can get my point. Uh, and here's a full test with the three section, okay? And two things to keep in mind, use fuzzers, use builders uh, to shorten and, and domain-driven your setup. They will allow you to shorten your test, to speed up their writing, to improve your bug detection, uh, your bug coverage and detection, uh, to make them less fragile because less connected to your implementation, and also to foster domain-driven expressivity. Uh, because uh, here, as you can see, uh, um, in terms of ubiquitous language, in blue, you can see city, Bellagio hotel, availability, fully booked hotels, uh, room types, et cetera, et cetera. Your, your test is full of, uh, the language of your of your domain of your business and not technical the name of stubs and and underscore things and underscore that and, uh, and yes technical stuff um this is this was the the, the part uh, when i was supposed to do some live coding session i'm sorry for that didn't time to prepare it so uh next time uh and uh, final wrap up before we ask uh, questions so to conclude um uh, outside in diamond uh, has been elaborated from and for the people we were working with during the last decades or so. Uh, it allows us to write fast and anti-fragile tests, meaning tests that fully embrace uh, your merciless refactoring sessions. With such test harness, you can change whatever you want easily within the within your code, within your, your hexagon or whatever. Uh, uh, the impact will stay at the builder level. Uh, everything is factorized. So the builder level is one uh, place where you factorize a lot of things. The private methods uh, doing the check also. So that it's very unlikely that you need to change a lot of tests when you change something, even related to the contract. Uh, and uh, it allows us also to fully embrace domain driven design, especially uh, the ubiquitous language part uh, in our test because, uh, and it's a key point, it's, it's really allows us to catch lot of tiny bugs that are located in boring code, the one from the adaptation in all our possible combination. Uh, then the left side, right side adapters are for hexagonal architecture APIs. So DDD, but covering uh, your ass uh, for the blind spots. Um, so I, I would love to have your feedback and questions about it uh, right now, but also through Twitter where you can reach me uh, with this Twitter handle, you can see on, on the screen. It's just the beginning for me to talk about this topic. Uh, I, I will continue to to explain what it is in the upcoming weeks uh, through uh, real life coding session this time, uh, and, and maybe videos in order to clarify uh, the whole process, meaning the workflows, the decision taking, uh, making the, the design, uh, how it's how it relates, how it's 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 made uh, in action, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So uh, do, do we have time for questions? Do you have questions? I don't know from... Yes, we, we have about five minutes for questions. So we have first question, or uh, let's see in the chat what we have. So the first question, how about expressing acceptance tests using Gherkin Cucumber? Uh, Actually, uh, I use uh, Gherkin uh, only if I have some domain um, stakeholders that want to um, uh, that want to, to, to play that game with me. Uh, I've seen so many situations where uh, the um, the teams were um, striving to, to make it happen and to have those conversations, and it didn't well well. 
<coughs> actually, um, I'm much more um, uh, interested by the exploratory part of BDD. Uh, the example mapping sessions, the, the, the discussion sessions, uh, the discussions, uh, than the uh, Gherkin uh, part. So I, I will only pay the price of Gherkin integrations uh, and all the stuff. And it's not only to write the Gherkin scenario, it's also how to plug it to your real implementation for your uh, cucumber test or spec flow or whatever is, is working. So I won't pay that price if there is no appetite uh, with the domain. I will try to, to make it, but if the domain is not willing to do and to play with us with that, no, I won't pay the price. I'd rather write acceptance tests like this and try to make them as much as possible domain-driven uh, uh, design uh, in the form. Good. So um, the second question is from Mansour. What is your strategy to deal with uh, Testing secured APIs. From testing secure? Yeah, what is your strategy to deal with testing secured APIs? Uh, I, I don't understand the question uh, for the security API for the, I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe Mansour can uh, 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 reformulate the question and ask again. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the, I didn't grab the, yeah, the meaning of the. Yeah, another question. When we, when you have role of QE, I think he means, or she means QA. Yeah. What, yeah. what kinds of tests is QA responsibility and which one is developer's responsibility? Uh, it depends on the, on the context of the company. The QA we currently working with uh, in the hospitality group is uh, is the one doing lots of end-to-end um, -end tests. So it, it takes some time to make some kind of end-to-end -end tests for the website, for the uh, web app, for the mobile apps, uh, because we our APIs uh, are serving both uh, um, six different brands of hotels. Uh, on the, on the web and and uh, also all the mobile API uh, no mobile applications sorry for Android and iOS, uh, so he had written lots of automated tests with Selenium and things like that, uh, but they are kind of fragile tests. There is no nothing new with that, but uh, they help us. Uh, but more than that, I think that every time I work with QA people, liking to challenge us playing with us as Dev, saying, uh, bragging with us, oh, I, can, I, will, I will crush your app, I will crush your API, uh, but, but uh, uh, with jokes, huh, something like that, uh, not, uh, not toxic, uh, not toxic <laughs> behaviors, but, but to have fun, to have like, it's like a game. Uh, they try to, 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 make, to break our API, and then it's like a challenge, and it's really, because as Dev, I think we have some kind of bias. We have many bias, but one bias is we really love happy pass. As dev, we really write happy pass. And, and uh, so we, we have lot, we were able to write lots of happy pass tests, but all the corner cases, all the, uh, the strength thing, uh, it's uh, harder for us to, to. So QA people are really helpful for to challenge our, our, us on that and to, to help us to improve. And every time the QA find a bug with his end-to-end uh, -end acceptance test or exploratory test, uh, we, of course we wrote, uh, we write some um, acceptance test on our test harness so that it never uh, happen again. So it's, it's like a, a duo, I would say, uh, of different. I hope it answers the question, but. Okay, we have Ramin raising his hand. You can, uh, you want to talk Ramin? So. I think I wrote my question. It was about the Q QE role. Okay. Thank okay. you for the answer. Yeah, thank cool. you. Thank you. Does it answer the, the question? Yeah? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I like, I really love working with testers. Really, I, I, I love it. It's, it's really very interesting for us as them. We have some time for another question. Are the unit tests that you write, especially fo focused on some type of code, for example, only slash mostly testing edge cases slash complex algorithms? Uh, for the fine grain unit test, you mean? 
Um, maybe I, I sure. think, yeah, I, I, basically, uh, everything I, I write, uh, I write in my implementation, I always start with a test, meaning that I never start implementing something without having write a, uh, at least an acceptance test. Sometimes, two times, uh, my, my, my heuristic is uh, for the inner loop, for the fine grain unit test, is every time I find uh, something that is more difficult than for me to handle in 10 minutes, something like that, then I can, I can start unit test, fine grain unit test. Uh, and it's like uh, Bruno is talking about uh, test, like uh, when, when you build a house, you, you can, you, you can uh, need to put some woods uh, in order to consolidate the, 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 the working process. And then at the end of the day, uh, you can remove them sometimes, two times, when, when, uh, when it's wet and, and when uh, the wall is, is hard. And, uh, so uh, some kind, uh, those fine grain unit tests may look like that those tiny um, uh, woods uh, that help us to design, that help us to make it grow. And then after, I, I can remove them uh, to keep only the uh, acceptance test. In some condition, this is what we, we are doing. And sometimes it's really a core domain or core. Uh, I'm not always doing outside in. Uh, my main uh, heuristic is outside in, but sometimes to start when I want to uh, explore something, I may uh, jump into classicist and uh, inside out uh, um, workflow. Uh, so it's, it's really a, a balance, but I almost always start with outside in. Uh, good. So do you have time for another question or? Yeah, I have all the time you want. So, so let's see how to, how uh, would, you, would you deal with cases where you have multiple primary adapters for same port, HTTP controllers, CLI commands, listeners? Would you write same test as scenarios for each primary adapter? No, in my case, as, as um, um, in my case, I write the acceptance test, okay? And uh, I may have some, uh, well, actually this is something that I do not have to do a lot. Uh, I've had to make it once in the last 10 years. So uh, it's not uh, something that I'm really, uh, uh, that, I, that I needed to, to, to do, but uh, my uh, intention uh, should would be to uh, reuse the same acceptance test and to as i made with um, with the uh, the final checking uh, step uh, to hide the implementation details to hide the way uh, the adapter is asking to myself the stuff uh, in, in, into that uh, kind of variation i will have maybe one method for the initialization of the request or for the request and then some kind of uh, uh, feature toggle or, or boolean thing saying, I want to run this test with that adapters, left side adapters, or I want the very same acceptance test with that uh, other mode, with that very, uh, with the other left side adapter. So same acceptance test, two different strategy uh, for the, uh, the way of asking the question and, and, and uh, getting the, the answers and checking, but it will be the same uh, template method, I would say, it will be the same steps and the uh, acceptance test will be the same. This is when your uh, middleware, either HTTP or Kafka or whatever, is behave the same. Because uh, what I've seen often is that it's really hard to, uh, to have a, a non-leaky uh, abstraction for the left side ports when you have very different uh, middlewares and, 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 uh, and way of interacting with your domain. It's possible. But in some cases, the devil is in the details, and and you you will have to to go through uh, some um, states or through whatever uh, subscription ID or, or stuff to identify. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm very skeptical uh, for this uh, more than one left side adapter uh, working well with a good testing strategy. But I, I would encapsulate that change. Okay, and, and keep, keep the steps and have like, two different options for the implementation. Uh, good. Uh, I don't know if we still have time. So Thomas, tell me if you... No, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, so from another question is from 
your code is still accepting test. I would rather accept terms like web controller response state you like uh, 200 and in integration test or are you mixing those in one code base? Uh, I'm not sure to have fully grasped the, um, uh, can you please repeat it, please Sheriff? Yeah, from your code is still acceptance test. This is a question in the chat. I would rather accept terms like web controller response state use like to 200 in integration test or are you mixing those in one code base? Maybe maybe he mean or he means or she means that are you are you accepting technical terms in your acceptance test? Uh, I'm not I'm not accepting technical terms in my acceptance test, uh, and I hide them. I fully encapsulate them behind a um, private member, either. Uh, uh, method extension, extension method, or either a private method in, in my test suite. So that the uh, uh, the check, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I can just display the, uh, the example uh, on the screen. Sorry, it may be easier. Yeah. Check, uh, let me find it. I think I have a slide for that. Uh, okay, so I need to share from the slide. Let me share the screen. Okay, can you see a slide on the? So here the my test is only uh, saying check that room are matching the requested criteria. Now, okay, it's it's, it's claim as a, from a domain driven uh, design perspective. Um, I didn't have to to manage that that example. It's, it's a bad example, but uh, it's nonetheless, it's not technical at all. Check that rooms are matching the requested criteria. It's not uh, technical at all. All the technology, all the DTO, all the HTTP stuff will be hidden in that private static uh, method belonging to my test suite. So that means that um, the fact that I'm checking that it's HTTP 200 or uh, that uh, I get the answer through a rooms availabilities um, uh, data type, it may be a DTO here in that case, uh, and I'm checking on that, I'm checking various properties, etc., etc., uh, is fully hidden. Uh, so it's um, it's that allows me that allows me to check and to detect all the bugs we have in the desalination, salination, adaptation, etc., uh, code from the adapter, but it does not uh, pollute. My uh, let me check. Uh, it does not pollute my my test code. You know, my test code is just uh, doing that. So there is no HTTP here. The only technical thing I have here is the web controller. Uh, but it's uh, once again I I, I may have hide uh, hide that. But since all my acceptance tests are targeting uh, web controllers, uh, I'm fine with it. In the trailer of a finally pick. But there is no HTTP and things like that. Uh, everything is, is hidden. Uh, is, everything is hidden. I hope it's answered the questions, but I'm not sure. Does <laughs> uh, uh, it answer the question? I hope so. Yeah. So, um, Daniel Gomez Rico uh, have, has a question. I feel that some teams go into writing a lot, a lot of acceptance tests, evading the need of abstracting, creating some kind of architecture and patterns, and never go in the way of improving the code itself because they feel that the system is safe. What's your advice to still do a lot? A lot of acceptance tests, but not forget about the overall overall system architecture design. Uh, I'm not sure to grasp what uh, the overload, uh, the overall architecture design is. In that, does it include the other uh, external components with networks uh, in between, or does it include just the uh, the whole box, the whole API? Yeah, maybe Daniel can yeah, can, talk, can, can just... talk can can talk and. Give us more. But the, the, before he gives some some indications, uh, my acceptance tests are fine, uh, coarse grain unit tests actually targeting the full API, the full components, 
uh, and uh, since I had so many issues with the uh, badly tested uh, uh, adapters uh, code, uh, I've decided just to, as a trade-off, to include them without taking the penalty of having a long duration test with IOs and things like that. So stub all of the uh, IOs, the last miles uh, IOs, network, uh, disk, and things like that. Uh, these, I will, I will stop them, uh, but uh, uh, the rest of the code will be uh, executed uh, in my acceptance test, which is still domain-driven uh, in his expressions. So uh, for me, it's really a fast test covering whatever I need. There are lots of discussions about uh, what should be enough to uh, to do the um, combination between integration test and uh, and unit test, and uh, you will cover more uh, cases, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's really theoretical for me. Yes, in theory, but in practice, what I've seen is uh, lots of uh, unit tests covering a lot of things and, 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 and bugs in the uh, integration, bugs in the adaptation on the, on the boring code, uh, on the boring side of the code. So the reason why I took that trade-off at the end of the day. Uh, at the very beginning, I was doing like every uh, one was uh, advising also, uh, split your test in the integration one and, 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 and uh, unit uh, on the other hand, and, and it will be fine. But actually it has always, uh, been difficult for teams uh, to to cover that properly. So, okay, let's adjust the strategy and, and do that trade-off. And I've seen a lot of people uh, on Twitter saying, you should not do that. You should not uh, test the adapter. You should only target the domain side of the... Okay, uh, okay. I'm, it's been more than 10 years that I'm doing, delivering hexagonal architecture stuff. Uh, with various contexts, various teams, various uh, culture, uh, and it always ends like this. So, uh, okay, if you want, but uh, not 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 for me anymore. Not for me anymore. And and despite the fact that it it will hurt uh, the principles, uh, I, I really don't care. Uh, it's it's please us, uh, and it makes the job so. I thought it was time to, to describe it more, a little bit more. Um, so uh, thanks again for, for this opportunity to, to discuss that. Uh, yeah. So, so, so the, the adapters at least could have integration tests at least. The, I, I, uh, I write, I still write the integration test for the adapters. I mean, uh, the real uh, uh, implementation with the configuration, with the network, etc. We write um, integration tests that, that, that are contract tests. You know, you the contract test, which is an integration test, will, will compare the real implementation of the adapter in motion, in action with a real backend with our stub, with the stub we are using in, in our acceptance test. It's the only way to check that your stub that you are using uh, uh, every every time, every day, uh, every time <laughs> when you're doing with your code yeah. base uh, is is a kind of faithful to and, and still relevant and and so so uh, I'm not saying that I'm stop doing that. I'm just saying that the coverage of the number of cases of corner cases, etc. Uh, I, I I put lots of effort in the acceptance test and all the combination. Um, it may look like complicated to, to write acceptance tests, but actually when you have uh, builders, when you have fuzzers, it's really quick, it's really fast. So, uh, and, and, and when you take uh, the effort to try to code them uh, short, huh? I mean, uh, not more than uh, 12 years, uh, 12 lines of codes, uh, they are kind of easy to grasp, easy to reason with, uh, so uh, it's uh, you can have the cake and eat it too, in my opinion. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so we still have questions. It's up to you, Tom Thomas. If you if we let's can... take ten minutes if you want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's take another five to ten minutes. Okay. When we talk about feature testing DDD, should we include the real implementation of repositories 
in the test flow or should we pass a mock repository? I think you already answered this, but. Yeah, I will try, if, it, if it's possible, I will try to just to stop the last mites, uh, to stop just the connectivity with the network. With database, it's a little bit different. Uh, so in some cases with database, I, I, uh, I will stop the entire, uh, either the entire repository, but, but if I can, I will try to cover also the, the code of the repository. Because in the code of the repository, you may have some kind of adaptation. You may have lots of corner cases. Uh, and it depends on the technology uh, your repository will deal with, will deal, deal with, sorry. Uh, uh, so, so if I can, I will try to avoid to fully stop them, but sometimes to times, again, trade off, uh, it may be easier to stop the entire repository. Okay. Uh... Okay, so Daniel Gomez explaining his question, well, why, well, what I was trying to point in out is that when you write unit tests with the TDD, it helps to write a code that is more well-designed, not always in parentheses, yeah. but it's a side effect for, of that. And that I feel that the side effect is, this approach is more like the opposite of it. It's just explaining uh, his question here. You know, it's a fact that um, when you when you use TDD, TDD is a really nice way of improving your design and improving your design skills. There are some kind of discussions uh, in the late days with uh, between Sandro Moncuso and, and uh, Jean Baptiste Rensberger, G. B. Rensberger, um, and uh, I think the discussion was very interesting. Uh, so I, I would uh, suggest everyone to have a look at it's on YouTube. Uh, it's a, a discussion between Salomon Moncuso and G.B. Rensberger. Uh, I'm more on the uh, Sandro Moncuso uh, side in, in terms of uh, background and how we, um, uh, how we learn how to design and, and, and a lot of things. I have lots of background on, on that. Uh, before I, I discovered TDD, I've learned lots of uh, OP stuff and, and design and pattern and so uh, design for me is uh, is, is um, I, I won't say it's not an issue or it's always an issue for everyone but uh, I didn't always need TDD for me to learn how to improve the design of my uh, of my uh, of my code but it's a fact that when you are starting this journey uh, it's uh, too bad missing that, uh, that uh, experience. Uh, as, as a, as a learn, learner, I highly suggest you to learn TDD from the basics uh, before you, you jump into some kind of trade-off like, yeah, like this. Um, yes. And so, so it's, uh, it's like always, it's trade-off. It depends on your context. It depends on the team you are working with, the level of experience the maturity uh, and but from for for years I, I, I was applying recipes and, and things that I found uh, interesting and and, and uh, uh, community uh, communicated by others and and one day I realized that uh, if I pick that thread off here in that condition I pick that thread off here in that condition okay it's not by the book but it works amazingly well for, for, for us, for me, uh, so, um, but disclaimer, I, 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 it's been more than 50 years that I'm doing TDD, so I think I learned a lot of, from my mistakes also, so uh, there is no silver bullet, huh? there is no one good thing to, to do it. I, I'm, my point is just uh, try to discover that style. Uh, if you have a, uh, an experience of TDD already, and you want to, uh, and you want to uh, to do some uh, hexagonal architecture style. Let's let's, uh, let's try, try and see by yourself. Good. One last question: uh, What kind uh, of assertions do you write in tests for factories? Example factory that produces a list of hotels. Um, how do I test my factory? My factories? Is it the question? Mm, I, I'm not sure, Ivan. 
Uh, Ivan, say, say yes, says yes. Uh, in, uh, for, for my factories, maybe I will, I will uh, have some kind of uh, fine grain unit test. So maybe uh, here and there, as I said, here and there I will uh, do some fine grain unit test and classical TDD uh, for stuff. So it will re really depends on, uh, on, uh, on the factory, the kind of factory, the kind of the, the, the expressivity. Or, so I have no uh, answer uh, for that really. Except that I may be, uh, uh, I may write a lot of uh, fine grain uh, unit tests uh, for such uh, things, if it's worth. Yeah, and also for for I'm I'm, I'm using a lot of uh, value objects, and even if I'm working in C sharp, which is not really uh, fully uh, good for that, uh, I, I'm I used uh, I wrote a library. You so to you just inherit from a value type, uh, any type you, you inherit from, and, and you will have one method to implement for, for this type to be a, a real value type. But I, I start here and there to write unit tests to just check that this type is really a value type. Uh, this is an example of, of, of kind of unit tests I've made regularly, um, checking that what I wanted to be a value type is really a value type. Uh, meaning that when I call the, some method on it, it will do some closure of operation, not mute its, its state, and things like that. So these are kind of tiny unit tests, but uh, very helpful also. I, I, I do mainly acceptance tests, but I also uh, don't find grain, uh, coarse grain, but I, I, I continue to, to write uh, fine grain too. Less than before, but yeah. Good. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you, Thomas, for this awesome talk. Thank you, everyone, for uh, participating in this uh, meetup. And we hope to see you in another meeting for another technological stuff and to share no knowledge between us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah, cheers. Have a nice weekend. Bye. You too. Have a nice weekend. Thank you.